Manchester United have done it. They've beaten Copenhagen in a must-win game after a fantastic save from Andre Onana. And let's be honest, the penalty was an absolute joke. It shouldn't have been a penalty. But you know what? Andre Onana saving that, that is going to start his career. He was quality today. He made some brilliant saves. But that penalty save is going to give him the confidence boost to what I believe will show that he is a world-class goal keeper but we've got to talk about Manchester United the performance the style of play there was a lot of poor things that first half honestly I would have rather watched paint dry the football we're playing bad the the way we're winning games unsustainable am I worried about the derby absolutely but Christian Eriksen was fantastic he definitely changed the game he definitely made a massive impact we're going to talk about him how he impacts the the tempo of the game the control I think Rasmus Hoyland's all-round game is really good but the poor guy you've got to feel sorry for him he just gets absolutely no service Rashford is clearly lacking confidence Rashford and Garnacho definitely should have scored because you look at the way Manchester United played first half was absolutely dreadful so boring I cannot believe what I was watching I think we were like the worst team at Everson watched it was worse than that Van Hal nil 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 period and then the second half was a lot better obviously it was long balls it was direct it's not a sustainable style of play we're still completely evading the midfield but that is how Tenog tactically sets us, sets us up but in that second half we could have actually scored three goals the thing that's mad is as bad as we were we could have won that game three nil because Bruno Fernandes put some fantastic balls in Ericsson put some fantastic balls in and I think this is the way we're playing. We've got players like Bruno, we've got players like Ericsson that have just got that quality to produce something out of nothing, play that killer ball in behind. And 99% of the time, Rashford's confident he scores half the chances he gets. Today, he's not confident, he's not putting away. The attack aren't firing. You've got to talk about Rashford, Anthony, they're not firing. I'm not even going to bring Hoyland into this because he's a different kind of guy. He holds up the ball, he adds so much. And I just feel sorry for him that hasn't got service. But I thought Harry Maguire was phenomenal. I thought Varane was phenomenal. I think that centre-back pairing were absolutely phenomenal today. A uh, round of applause to the centre-back pairing. They've been fantastic. Big message to Jadon Sancho there. Harry Maguire was wanted sold. Harry Maguire, the Man United and Tenog agreed to sell Maguire to West Ham. He was that unwanted. He was behind Luke Shaw, behind uh, Lindelof in the pecking order. He was the fifth, sixth choice centre-back. I think Johnny Evans might have been above that. Maybe one point. Maguire had a game played well, had another game played well. Yes, the opposition to teams that weren't the best, but he played well. He took his chances today. He played well again. He got a goal. He didn't sulk that he'd been on the bench. He did not sulk at all. He he, he fought hard. He won his place back. And that will be a message to Jaden Sancho because I've not been Harry Maguire's biggest fan. I said, as a bench player, I don't mind him, but he's not good enough to start for United week in, week out. And I stand by that. I don't think he's going to be good enough as a starter going forward. I want Todd about, I want Antonio Silva, but I will not disrespect the fact that he has been good these last few games. I will give him credit where credit is due. I will not disrespect the fact that he's, he's acted like a professional, um, kept his mouth shut, worked hard and been fantastic in these games. Whereas Jadon Sancho, he should be taking some notes. And I want to talk about Manchester United. I want to talk about the way they're playing. I want to talk about Ten Hag. You know me, I'm Ten Hag in. There's too many problems at the club for me to be Ten Hag out. When I was looking at the football we were playing, I had to have some criticisms of Ten Hag. I had to be critical of them, the way the football we're playing. And I had to say, you know, I do think that Ten Hag could get himself sacked if he does continue to play like that. <laughs> Anana saved us today. We were winning games so narrowly by fine margins. Brilliant moments. And to be honest, we did enough to win that game 3-0 today. And you could say, actually, well, deep down, Eric Tenor did coach a 3-0 and that second half was a lot better. But you have to look in the first half how bad that was. The first half versus Sheffield United. The first half today was some of the worst football I, I, don't, I think I've ever watched United play. And we know as United fans, there's so many lows. There's been so many lows watching us play. You, you, you guys know how bad we have been. But the first half today and the first half versus Sheffield United, I generally can't remember times we've I've seen worse football than that. You know, if you and people will say, look, Ten Hag's had injuries uh, and all of that. And I understand that. People say he's playing with a lot of Ollie's players. It's not players that fit the system. I completely understand that. But I always say, look at Newcastle. Eddie Howe beat Crystal Palace. 4-0, playing six of the players that were starting under Steve Bruce and the Steve Bruce players. You know, they weren't a lot of Eddie Howe's players. Newcastle don't have a better team on paper than United, but they're playing much better football. They have the highest XG, most goals scored. Look what Eddie Howe's doing with players. And that's when you'd be critical of Ten Hag. And of course, in Ten Hag, again, I'm going to back the manager. There's too many problems at United. But the way Ten Hag set us up was basically back four and Amrabat, big space, front five, Bruno, McTominay as this ghost second striker in the first half, which was completely not working. McTominay in the first half was like having 10 men, Anthony Hoyle and Rashford. And because there was this big hole in midfield and we were we weren't trying to play through the midfield, and that might partly be because one, that's how Tenog set us up. And has Tenog set us up that way because he wants to play that way, or has Tenog set us up that way because we don't have possession-based midfielders, midfielders other than Amrabat to help with build up and maybe Tenog worries about our ability and possession to control games. 
games as you've seen how much we've given the ball away recently when we have tried to keep possession potentially it's that because Ajax weren't playing the way that we were playing I watched Ajax play which is again why I'm 10 our game because I do think we're going to see a better style of play but the football we're seeing from United was horrific it was just get the ball lob it over get the ball lob it over completely evade the midfield lob it over it was predictable it was slow it was lethargic it was boring and it was so easy to cope for Copenhagen who defended so well in that first half really made us us hard to made them hard to break down they had this low block but we were so predictable we're doing the same thing over and over again and if we're doing the same thing over and over again with the same players who are underperforming over and over again and the same tactics you know what are we going to expect and I, I think worry I think I do worry about that Man City game that we're going to play like we did against Brentford and Sheffield United and uh our, Copenhagen, which for 60% of those games, we were not good enough. Yes, we had good moments in those games, but for the majority of those games, we weren't good enough. And if we play like that against Man City, we'll find ourselves 2 3 nil down, and that's going to expose us. And I worry that Tenog is just keeping with these tactics that are getting us very unsustainable wins. And I think that he needs to adapt and he needs to change things. And injuries aren't helping. You can see the absence of, you know, someone like Luke Shaw. You can see the absence of someone like um, Martinez in build up in the back from the left hand side of the defence because that's where Tenog would like to improve and build up because we bypass the midfield and build up and obviously we don't get that and we can see the absence of injuries but you have to say the football we're playing was not good enough and it's it was not great and that first half was awful you have to give a lot of credit to Christian Eriksen when Eriksen came on in that second half it was he was absolutely fantastic he was absolutely uh, brilliant I was a bit critical of why Mount wasn't coming on I'm thinking you sign Mount for all this money and and we're bringing on Eriksen you're thinking what's going on here but you know when Ericsson came on I wasn't exactly mad about it I thought yes we need to change that midfield I was fuming that Amrabat came off I still don't know why Amrabat came off because with that um, Tomane Ericsson Bruno midfield you could see that Copenhagen were causing us problems in transition on the counter-attack so why we looked better on the ball and going forward because Ericsson's very good on the ball off the ball we struggle which means that that will not work against Man City because we're going to be off the ball more than on the ball and I think when you dominate a game when you are going to dominate possession Ericsson's always a player to have if you're going to play someone that you're going to have less possession against, don't play Ericsson. He would get outrun by City. We've seen him get outrun by the big teams. But if you're playing a team that you know you're going to have more possession with, play Ericsson because he's one of the few players that can dictate the game, slow down the game, make those passes and keep the ball well. And the assist, I know Maguire scored the goal, but for me, you know, everyone's talking about oh, Maguire's goal. Ericsson's assist was unbelievable. And he played another good ball into Rashford, who had Lukaku's Timberlands on. Um, Bruno played a great ball into... Um, Garnacho as well and I think part of it is the football we're playing is unsustainable another part of it is the attack aren't just clicking and scoring goals we could have won the game 3-0 today but even if we won the game 3-0 today I, I don't know how happy I'd have been because I've been like won the game 3-0 we, we score goals but this isn't the football I want to play this isn't the most attacking exciting brilliant football even though we score three goals and you know ultimately it's not the way that Tenor played at Ajax he played a lot better than that uh, but it was a bit questionable but you have to give it to Varane I think Varane has definitely become one of the most underrated centre-backs in the world a lot of people write him off uh, he was fantastic today absolutely rock solid him and Maguire are, f are forming a solid partnership I I'd rather Maguire play with Varane than Lindelof I think Lindelof's been really really poor this season I don't think Ruggielan was brilliant but Ruggielan offers the overlap which helps Rashford um, you know it's good to see Amrabat back in midfield I, I thought Amrabat was our only midfielder that had a solid game in the first half in the first half I said Hoyland held up the ball well Amrabat was the only good midfielder that had a solid game but was having to do everything so then was marked out the game so they dropped down a level I said you know the defence has been fine and Nana's been fine I even said before the penalty game I think that Andre and Nana had a really good game and I generally believe there's a quality keeper on Nana and that he did have a good game I have to say I think he was fantastic I think Hoyland's great but um you know you have to look at the first half and McTominay was playing as this shadow striker running into the box this McTominay I know he scores goals and I know he was a lot better in the second half because he dropped a bit deeper but this McTominay experiment needs to end he's not good enough for United Maguire can be good enough as a, as a bench player as a player that's coming in and Martin as his injury but McTominay won't be you know he's not better than Ericsson he's not better than Mount and you know I know that you know, he scored goals and he's been impactful and stuff. And him coming in as a second striker was good. But that midfield free of McTominay, Bruno and Amrabat was the least balanced thing I've ever seen. Bruno was out of position, dropping deep. McTominay was the second striker, shadowing Hoyland, but basically making a few runs in the box and completely hiding off the ball. There was no balance in the midfield. There was absolutely nothing. There was just nothing going on there. For me, you cannot play McTominay in that role again. Um, <clears throat> you know, I can't wait till Mano's back. Maybe you could do Casemiro and Amrabat versus Man City. Hopefully Amrabat's not injured. But that midfield in the first half was dreadful. I think Bruno actually had a good second half. I thought Bruno in the first half was a 1 out of 10. I think he had a good second half. I am worried about Rashford. I'm a big Rashford fan. You know that I like Marcus Rashford. I know he gets a lot of stick. 
but he's been poor. I think looking at Garnacho, the way Garnacho came on, I know we missed a sitter, but when Garnacho came on, he was so electric. He, he, he was creating things, things were happening. We had this whole different energy when Garnacho came on. So the way I look at it is like, okay, let's. I think Garnacho deserves more minutes. He's doing more than Anthony and Rashford. I think Ericsson's been brilliant, but I wouldn't play him against Man City because he'll get outrun off the ball. Ericsson's good in possession. Why have we brought Mason Mount if we're not going to play him? The Tomane experiment needs to end. He's given away two penalties in the last two games, but Maguire and Varane were solid. Bat five, solid. Uh, Hoyland's hold up play is good. Grew into the second half, much better in the second half, but it's not convincing. Uh, we need investment in January. I need the Glazers gone. They need to go. Um, you know, I think, you know, the wins are papering over a few cracks and I am still worried going forward. But let's be positive. It's a win. That win could keep us in the Champions League. And Anana, who lost us, you know, a win against uh, Galatasaray, won us a win today. He's completely redeemed himself. And maybe that's the best thing that's going to happen to Anana because that confidence, we could maybe see the new Anana. Smash your like, smash your subscribe. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Please do share the video. See you next time and uh, bye.